Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the basis of a dual vector space. Okay, so we've now seen what the dual basis for the dual vector space is going to be equal to. It's going to be the set of covectors in the dual vector space, v1 star, v2 star, all the way up to vn star, where each one of these uh, maps sends uh, all vectors onto um, their coordinate with respect to the equivalent basis vector back in the original vector space. So for instance, v1 star will send all vectors in the vector space v onto the element of the field, which is their coordinate uh, in, that sits in front of the first basis vector. So if we decompose the vector into its linear combination of the basis vectors, this will be the first coordinate. So v1 star will send all vectors in the vector space v onto their first coordinate coordinate, v2 star will send them all onto their second coordinate, all the way down to the n star, which will send them onto their nth coordinate here. Okay, so, um, that then is the dual basis for the dual vector space. What I now want to see is how I can write all of my other um, elements, all of my other covectors of the dual vector space, as linear combinations of these vectors in the dual basis. Okay, so, this is what my claim is, and then uh, we'll actually see why this is going to be true. So if I have an element of my dual vector space, uh, phi, okay, so let's say phi is an element of phi star, okay, I claim that phi can be written as a linear combination of these dual basis vectors here, and the linear combination is specifically going to be phi of v1 uh, times v1 star plus phi of v2 times v2 star plus all the way up to phi of vn times vn star. Okay, so all you need to know is where does phi send all of the uh, basis vectors on the original vector space capital V and then those um, those coordinates, or, or, or rather those elements of the field, those are going to become the scalar coefficients that you have to put in front of these uh, basis vectors in the dual basis. Now I should stress that all of these additions here, these are done in the dual vector space, and all of these scalar multiplications, they are also done in the dual vector space. So everything here is in the dual vector space. Okay, so, what I want us to understand then is why this is going to send some vector onto the exact same thing as phi would send that vector onto. And remember, these things here are what phi would send each of the basis vectors in our original vector space V onto in the field capital F. Okay, so what we want to make sure of then is that this great big thing will send a vector v onto the same thing as what phi of v is equal to. So let's explore what this thing would actually send a vector v onto. Well now what we can do is we can apply the definition of addition in a dual vector space. Okay, uh, now of course we've got an arbitrary string of, uh, well we've got an arbitrary finite string, arbitrary then finite string of uh, vectors in the dual vector space added together here, but we can still uh, apply the definition. The definition extends to this in a very easy to understand way. Okay, so what this is going to become, just by the definition of how addition of uh, covectors actually works, this is going to be equal to phi of v1 times v1 star, and that function acting on v, plus, and then we'll have the next one here, phi of v2 times v2 star, and then that function acting on v, and it will go on and on all the way up to, we'll have phi of vn times vn star, and then that function acting on v. And what I've done here is I've decomposed uh, this addition in terms of um, the dual vector space into addition in the field. So all of these addition signs here, these are addition in the field. Now at the moment the scalar multiplication is still scalar multiplication in the dual vector space, but I have at least used the definition of addition in the um, dual vector space to turn it into addition in terms of the field. Okay, now what I'm going to do is use the definition of scalar multiplication here to pull out these scalars here. And what we'll end up with is that this will be equal 
to phi of v1. And again, this is just the definition of how addition and scalar multiplication are defined in the dual vector space. So this will be phi of v1 uh, times in the field v1 star of v, uh, and then we'll have plus in the field phi of v2 times, again, in the field v2 star of v, plus all the way up to phi of vn uh, times, again, in the field vn star of v. But what do we know about what v1 star, v2 star, all the way up to vn star map any vector v onto? Well, we know that they just map it onto the ith coordinate where we're talking about v ith star. Okay, uh, but just before I uh, add that point on, uh, let's just stress that this is multiplication in the field here. So we've taken scalar multiplication in the dual vector space and turned it into multiplication in the field. And of course, these additions are still additions in the field. Okay, right. So now the final thing then to do is uh, V1 star of a vector V will just be that coordinate A1 v2 star of v, it will map any vector just onto its second coordinate, a2, with respect to the initial basis b. Uh, and vn star of v will just map you onto the nth coordinate here. So this final thing then will just be a1 times phi of v1 plus a2 times phi of v2 plus all the way up to a n times phi of v n, which is exactly what we said it was equal to up here. Okay, so indeed, uh, as soon as you know the crucial information about any covector in the dual vector space, which is where does it send all of these basis vectors, then you can now write uh, this element of the dual vector space as a linear combination of uh, the dual basis vectors, v1 star, v2 star, all the way up to vn star. And the coefficients that you need, the scalar coefficients you need, are where does v1 go to in the field, where is phi1? Uh, sorry, where's phi of v1, where does v2 go in the field, so where's phi of v2, and where does vn go in the field, well, all the way up to where does vn go in the field, so what is phi of vn, and that will be our linear combination then of these uh, dual basis vectors in the dual vector space that this function, uh, or this covector, will actually be equal to. Okay, so that is then how you can use these vectors in the dual basis uh, to actually write any other covector in the dual vector space as a linear combination of them. Okay, right. So the final thing then that I want to do in this video is actually do an example of constructing a dual vector space. But actually, just before I go on to that, let me just point something out. The dual vector space that we have constructed here, we have now shown that indeed it will have the same dimension as the original uh, vector space V. And we know that any two vector spaces that are finite dimensional over the same field and which have the same dimension are actually isomorphic to one another, i.e. they're the same algebraic structure up to the fact that you've used different symbols to represent different elements. Okay, so in fact these two vector spaces, v over f and the dual uh, v star over f, they are actually isomorphic to one another. Now that's something that doesn't quite uh, necessarily hold true in infinite dimensional vector spaces, but in finite dimensional vector spaces it does hold true that the dual vector space is going to be isomorphic to the initial vector space. Okay, so you might think, well, what on earth is the point of that then? Okay, because I have now got the identical vector space back again. I haven't found you a new vector space. Anything that will be true in here will also be true in here. Okay, and yes, the vector space structure is the same, so you haven't found a new vector space from doing this. However, what is very interesting here is that this set of um, linear maps from the vector space V onto the field F can be equipped with an identical vector space structure to the original vector space, and that is why this is important. Okay, that this concept of a, a set of all these linear maps from the vector space V onto the field F can be equipped with a vector space structure that's isomorphic to the initial vector space. That's why this is deep. That's why it's important. We don't just care about creating a new vector space. That wasn't really the motivation for defining the dual vector space, that we were going to come up with some new algebraic structure. The big motivation why this is interesting is that this set fundamentally is interesting. So the fact that it can be equipped with an algebraic structure that mirrors the uh, 
vector space structure that it initially was describing, that it was initially all about, is very, very interesting. And that's why uh, this warrants study. OK, right. So now let's end with an example. OK, so the example we're going to end with is a very intuitive example. So we're just going to use our old friend uh, of R2. OK, so let's just use a really simple example to get used to this. OK, so R2 is lovely because we can draw a nice picture of it. OK, so I'll just remind you of the abstract structure of R2. So we'll go for column vectors to get to today. OK, so we'll have all pairs of real numbers, x1 and x2, OK, uh, where the xi's are elements of the real numbers. So this is what R2 is as a set, but we know that we can define um, a vector space structure on this very easily. And the way that we define addition is just component-wise. So if you want to add any two of these columns together, so if you've got one here, x1, x2, and you want to add it to another one, x1 bar, let's say, and x2 bar, the way that you do it is you can just define it using addition in the field of real numbers. Okay, so you just do it component-wise. You add x1 to x1 bar here, and you do that in the field of real numbers. And you add x2 to x2 bar, and again, you do that in the field of real numbers. So this is the defined addition on this structure. And of course, this is addition in the field of real numbers. OK, right. And scalar multiplication is very similar. So if you've got some scalar, which is just some element of the real numbers, and you want to multiply this by x1, x2, this column here, the way that you'll do that is also component-wise. So it'll just be c times x1 and c times x2. So you just multiply both components by c. And of course, that multiplication will again be in the real numbers. OK. So you use multiplication and addition in the real numbers to define multiplication and addition in the vector space. OK, so there's R2, and we know that R2 is lovely because we have a nice picture of it. OK, so what we can do is we can associate the vectors with points on a two-dimensional plane. We can associate these symbols with points on a two-dimensional plane. And the classical way of doing this, although not by no means the only way of doing it, is to do it in the Cartesian way. OK, so to divide the plane up into a nice grid, so I'll just... Uh, do a bit of that. So we're dividing up the plane into a grid here, like so. And they should hopefully be equal sizes, but never mind. OK, and then associate um, all of these symbols here. OK, so if you've got a column, x1, x2, what you'll do is go along by x1 and go up by x2 in the way that you've been trained to do for a very long time. OK, so for instance, uh, the column 1, 0, will be given this uh, point here and this position vector from the origin here. So it'll be associated with this little arrow here. And um, the uh, symbol 0, 1, the column 0, 1, will be associated with this point here. So it'll be associated with this uh, arrow from the origin to that point, that position vector. OK, so we can associate all of these symbols in the set. And this is the true vector space. This is the algebraic vector space, we can now associate them with these arrows in uh, the two-dimensional grid. OK, so there is our uh, vector space R2, and what we're now going to do is construct the algebraic dual of R2. OK, so we're going to try and think about constructing R2 star here, the dual of R2. Uh, now, what does this actually mean? Well, of course, we know that this means all of those linear maps from R2 onto R. OK, so we're going to want to uh, take all linear maps from R2 to R, and we're going to want to stick them all into a set, and that set is going to form our dual uh, vector space for R2 here. And of course, we now know that we can define addition and um, scalar multiplication on that. OK, now let's try and think about what the um, basis, um, the dual basis for this um, Dual, uh, this dual vector space of R2 is going to be. So, of course, to do that, we need a basis for R2 here, and we might as well take our standard basis for R2. So the standard basis for R2, which is often uh, denoted E, but by s no means is it the only basis, is to just use these two columns here, 1, 0, and 0, 1. Okay, but I stress that this 
really there's nothing special about this apart from the symbols the symbols are beautiful for these two vectors and that's the reason we've chosen them okay apart from the fact that the symbols are beautiful there's absolutely nothing special about those so as far as the actual algebraic structure is concerned there really is nothing special about these two okay and you might say well look at the picture there's something obviously special about those two but the picture was man-made as well i chose to associate those symbols with those two perpendicular unit length arrows okay um, again it was all man-made i made these special there's nothing as far as the algebraic structure is concerned that makes them special okay however i will uh, take this standard basis as my basis for r2 and let's try and construct the um dual basis for this so let's try and construct e star here okay and we'll give both of these vectors in the uh, basis here the standard basis name so we'll give this one e1 and we'll give this one the name e2 so this is now going to contain the two vectors e1 star and e2 star and what are these actually going to be? Well, these are, of course, going to be linear maps of R2 onto the real numbers. And how are they going to work? Well, E1 star will eat some column here. So we'll have a column X1, X2. So it'll take in as its entry, and I should have another bracket there. It'll take in as its entry one of these symbols from my vector space R2, and it's going to spit out a real number. And the way it will work is it will just be the coordinate, the first coordinate of this vector with respect to this basis. And here's a n nice reason why we chose this basis. Of course, the first coordinate will just be x1. And you might say, but surely that means this coordinate, you know, this choice of basis here is special because look it works so beautifully with the symbols here but of course this is just a symbol as well so yes it works beautifully with the symbols but that's the justification i've already given you for choosing that basis okay as i say i'll remain that that basis has nothing algebraically special about it but it is nice as far as the symbols are concerned okay so e1 star will just map x1 x2 onto x1 and the reason is that x1 x2 if we write it in terms of its linear combination, in terms of this basis, is just x1 times 1, 0 plus x2 times 0, 1. So this is the coordinate with respect to the first basis, and this is the coordinate with respect to the second basis. And we know that the um, dual basis vector, E1 star, needs to map every single uh, vector in R2 onto its first coordinate with respect to uh, R basis on the initial vector space, which was the standard basis here. Okay, similarly, E2 star, well, oh, actually, before we go any further, let's just think about what that will actually do. Okay, so in terms of the picture here, we know that the first coordinate with respect to this first basis vector is just how much it is uh, along. So, for instance, if you have something like, uh, let's say, this one here, and that's a boring one, uh, but never mind, this is 4, 4, clearly here, in my picture, okay, well, its first coordinate is just how much does it have in this direction, okay, so what's its component in this direction, okay, so if you like, you could, uh, well, you can sort of just take how much, it, how much that arrow points in this direction, okay, so it's projection down onto this line, basically, okay, which will just be 4, Okay, so that's really what we're doing. We're taking all of the vectors uh, in R2, so all of the points in this plane with their arrows uh, connecting them from the origin to that point, the position vectors, and we're just taking the projection of those position vectors along this line and getting rid of the bit that goes up this way. Okay, so that's intuitively in terms of our man-made picture here, what this means. Okay, and E2 star, similarly, will take a vector of R2, X1, X2 here, and what will it map it onto? Well, it will map it onto the second coordinate, which is X2, which, of course, is then the projection onto this line rather than that line. Okay, so those are our two dual basis vectors, and any other... Um, element of the dual vector space will just be a linear combination of these okay so it won't quite do it as purely as these two were doing it it will uh, give you a portion of the you know or give you a real number for both of your two coordinates it will give you a bit for both of the coordinates okay so that then is the picture of the dual basis for this uh, dual vector space r2 star okay and with that we'll end the video here